Hi, I'm Mayor Bob Andwig. We're doing the State of the City a little bit differently this year, because for now, staying apart is the best way to stay together. And staying together as a community is now more important than ever before. This year, we've faced uncertainty, disruption, and loss. COVID-19 has threatened our health, impacted our quality of life, and it has been extremely difficult for many in our business community. We were among the first to take the difficult actions to close our public buildings, including the library, the indoor pool, and our senior recreation center. We had to cancel our famous 4th of July festival, parade, and many of our popular recreational and educational programs. We're closer to a vaccine, but it's not over yet, and I'm asking you to stay the course. Urbandale is rooted in the principles of character counts, including respect, responsibility, caring, and citizenship. These temporary public health measures are about caring for one another. Please continue to wear a mask in public, social distance whenever possible, and check in on your neighbors, friends, and loved ones often. We have been continuously monitoring the impact of COVID-19 locally and statewide to make sure our community's actions are informed by the most accurate and authoritative information. We work with county, state, and federal health officials to protect our residents to the best of our abilities. There is no doubt about it. The pandemic has been extremely difficult for many of our businesses, especially small retailers and restaurants. The City Council and I have supported measures to assist businesses like relaxing parts of the sign code to make it easier to let customers know when and how they can patronize our local stores and restaurants. Pivoting to online meetings has made it possible for the public to continue participating in the democratic process. And online services like the Permit Portal allow builders and developers to keep projects on track without having to visit City Hall. We will keep looking for ways to support the success of our business community through these difficult times. Collaboration with our state and regional partners has been essential in assisting those businesses throughout this challenge. We worked with Polk County, the Greater Des Moines Partnership, and private businesses in the region to provide financial relief grants to over 35 Urbandale businesses. I am impressed by the determination and innovation that our business community has shown in continuing to serve customers while keeping people safe. Please consider visiting or buying from one of our small businesses soon. With the holidays coming up, this may be a great time to support the local restaurants and retailers that you appreciate having in Urbandale. 2020 has tested our resilience as a community. On August 10, a storm began producing widespread damage. About one in three households in Urbandale had some sort of tree damage on their property. Our crews collected more than 12,000 cubic yards of debris. That's the equivalent of about 400 large roll-off dumpsters. It took almost three weeks to collect all the debris from 4,500 locations around town. But I saw neighbors come together to help each other in our truly, uniquely Urbandale way as volunteers from all over the community helped us clean up our parks and our public spaces. In a progressive step forward this year, the City Council and I created and funded a health and social services function in the city budget. We've allocated $300,000 to support the well-being of our residents. Those funds are dedicated to long-standing partners like the Urbanville Community Action Network and the Urbanville Food Pantry, as well as new initiatives like our work with the Neighborhood Finance Corporation, to reinvest in and revitalize Urbandale neighborhoods east of 86th Street. The funding for these initiatives comes from the local option sales and service tax that was approved by the voters last year. In addition to supporting health and social services, the additional 1% sales tax keeps Urbandale property taxes lower by aggressively paying down municipal debt and avoiding unnecessary interest costs. I'm also pleased to see that the Lillis Lofts under construction on Douglas Avenue near Merlhay Mall this project was named for the late Bill Lillis, an Urbandale attorney and longtime champion of affordable housing. When complete, 42 households will be able to call Urbandale home at a rate they can afford. In October of this year, decades of work with the Federal Highway Administration, Iowa DOT, and local partners culminated in the opening of the Iowa Highway 141 flyover and Meredith Drive interchange. These projects in the urban loop will make traveling safer and more efficient and encourage development of amenities like restaurants and shops and great career opportunities in the new office buildings and business parks. Construction began this year on the new Parks and Public Works maintenance facility. This energy efficient, modern facility combines similar operations into one building. This creates efficiencies to support the services that we all appreciate, like great streets, snow clearing, 
well-maintained parks, and more than 50 miles of paved trails. This year we finished construction of the new fire station in the western portion of Riverdale, hiring 18 new firefighters and EMTs to provide round-the-clock protection for our residents. The new station is a state-of-the-art facility and we are working with the City of Clive to make it a success for both communities. It's also an energy efficient building that uses geothermal to heat and cool in the inside. We added dual purpose functionality to the station with components for training built right into the building walls. We completed the total reconstruction of 72nd Street, a two-year project that replaced the street and upgraded the storm sewer system to help with stronger and more frequent rain events and flash flooding. We also completed the total reconstruction of 104th Street from Hickman Road to Douglas Parkway. This road now has one lane in each direction and center left turn lanes. The entire area was modernized, including the addition of curbs, gutters, sidewalks, storm sewers, and buried power lines. This is a part of Irmendale's value proposition, services and infrastructure that businesses appreciate at a reasonable tax rate. We've added recreation amenities throughout Irmendale, including new pickleball courts at Walker Johnston Park. These courts have proven to be very popular among people of all ages that enjoy this rapidly growing sport. We've also completed the all-inclusive playground at Northview Park. Thanks to the support of many generous donors, we built an extraordinary, one-of-a-kind inclusive playground for children and families of all needs, enhancing the play experience for all Metro residents. This year, we upgraded the City Council Chamber's technology and added an online portal to support virtual meetings. That was essential when we had to quickly pivot from in-person meetings to virtual meetings due to COVID-19. Similar innovations like online building permit portal helped the Community Development Department to continue serving customers making residential and commercial investments in Urbandale. We want it to be easy for you to stay up to date with everything we're doing. That's why we've also launched a new YouTube channel dedicated to our city council meetings and created the Streamlined Council Recap that quickly summarizes the most important items from our meetings. We also launched an e-newsletter this year to keep you in the know on everything from city events to road work. You can sign up at urbandale.org news. Our nation is confronting hard realities about race and the way racism is reflected in institutional structures like the criminal justice system. The killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis has provoked discussion and change across the country and in our community. I want you to know that the Urban Hills Police Department is one of only a handful of agencies in Iowa to be accredited. Our accreditation and continued reaccreditation by an independent body reaffirms Urban Hills' clear commitment to procedural justice, ethical policing, transparency, fairness, and consistency in what residents can expect from our Urban Hill Police Department. In Urban Hill, we use model policies of the best practices in law enforcement. Police are prohibited from profiling residents based on race or ethnic background, and we prohibit the discriminatory practice known as pretextual traffic stops. We don't use chokeholds, and urban L officers always place an emphasis on de-escalation. We even require our officers to intervene and report when excessive force is witnessed. It is my promise to you that our urban L police officers are here to help you and keep you safe. That is a commitment to everyone all the time. Since my last State of the City address, our library has continued on a positive trajectory and can list many proud achievements. Perhaps the library's most compelling achievements this year center on our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. When we had to close the library doors in early March, our staff quickly adapted to continue offering as many services and resources to community members who suddenly found themselves at home and in many cases, isolated. We expanded our online collections and created digital library cards to allow those new card holders to access our digital collection from home. And we created a curbside pickup program for library materials, filling more than 10,000 requests for curbside pickup. We're an award-winning community. This year, Urbandale was ranked one of the best places to live in America by Money Magazine. We were the only city in Iowa to receive this well-respected honor, and Urban Hill's place on Money's List is an endorsement of the work of city staff, businesses, and residents to build a premier community for all generations. Urban Hill is served by some of the best schools in the state of Iowa. We maintain more than 50 parks, and we have over 50 miles of paved bike and walking trails, as well as tennis courts, baseball fields, and even a skate park. 
We also won two Paysetter Awards for innovations in public safety position recruitment from the state and National Public Employer Labor Relations Associations. Urbandale is supporting the success of businesses that generate new investment and employment in our community too. Isla Bankers Association is constructing a new headquarters building on North Park Drive. Across the street, North Park Dental has opened a new professional office building with additional space for lease. Just north of the 100th Street Interchange, Unity Point cut the ribbon on a new location specializing in sports medicine and concussion care. Primrose School is constructing a new early education and child care facility in the growing Heritage Park development near the Hickman Road Interchange. Broken Arrow Ware has reinvested in the Merle Hay Road Corridor, giving a dynamic architectural upgrade to an old building. Express Logistics chose the Urbandale Loop for a prominent new office location for their successful business. Other businesses are responding to the opportunities provided by new interstate access. Flow Car Wash is building a new location on Meredith Drive, and Casey's plans a store that will sit just off the new Meredith Drive half time and interchange. Quickstar will add to the Urbandale's amenities for travelers with a planned location at the Hunter Street Interchange and Plum Drive. When Urbandale invests in infrastructure with its federal and state partners, we do so to increase safety, efficiency, and economic opportunity. The growing list of companies choosing Urbanil helps demonstrate the return we're seeing in our public investments. Today is certainly not the place that we thought we would be back at the start of 2020. But all the things that we have accomplished, despite our challenges, have combined to create a place that is something valuable and truly unique and special to the residents and businesses that call Urbandale home. I am proud and honored to be the mayor of Urbandale and to serve alongside council members Russell, Hoagie, Carberry, Montgomery, Blake, and Obrecht. Thank you for contributing to our community and truly making Urbandale a place that is special and unique for all our residents and businesses.